Rebecca here. Welcome to my universe. This last weekend, I went to an event called the Deep Playa Campout that was put on by a group called Do More Now. It's a group that goes together to Burning Man and different events um, similar and like that. But the campout is basically multitasking. The campout is basically where everybody who went to Burning Man comes and takes their tents and camp stuff out and dust off all the Burning Man dust and then people who didn't get to come to Burning Man come to their camp out and hang out with their friends in, in the group. Right? Well, um, Khan went to went to Burning Man this year, so that was the, the conclave that he he went with and they he they helped him out with tickets and he helped them out with fire and and they were mutually beneficial for each other anyway. Um, so I went and got to hear Burning Man stories and got to see all the dust on the tents and that dust is serious. I helped Dan set up his tent with all the Burning Man dust on it and it was raining. And when that dust gets rain on it, it turns into this slippery, slimy mud because technically it's, they hold Burning Man on a dried up lake bed. So it's that really slimy bottom silt stuff at the bottom of the lake. And my fingers are still dry and cracking from being in contact with that highly alkalized, I think it's alkaline, um, mud. That stuff's serious. That is serious stuff. The event was, was neat. I stayed Friday and Saturday night and, um, uh, they had art up and they had this DJ booth that was really cool looking. There's a old car in the background and they put lights on it and um, it was like a big carport that was kind of curved like this, you know, with a big opening. So the DJ had their own little stage with all their equipment and the speakers and everything and it faced, faced out and then they had a tent so you could, you know, hang out, sit on some couches or dance under a covered area and then there was plenty of uncovered area for when it wasn't raining. So the DJ booth looked really cool. And I was a mic where um, I was camped with Ignition, my fire troop, that came as well. Some of the members went to Burning Man and some of them didn't. So we, some of us met up at the, the event. We brought, had our big 30 by 30 um, cover, like canvas 30 by 30 big pavilion tent thing. No walls. Anyway. We were like right in the middle, so there was DJ and things going on right in this main area. And one of the things they did was they had a nacho cheese rustling. Sounds really gross. It is really gross. Uh, and I'm thinking, why are they wrestling with nacho cheese? Like, who thought? Like, I've heard of, of lube wrestling. I've heard of all kinds of weird wrestlings. But what is with, what is with nacho cheese like who decided that well I was sitting around the fire and somebody told the story of why it's nacho cheese somebody somebody's dad had a somebody's father had a big a lot of rations and there was like a five five gallon bucket full of dried nacho cheese and so they're like what the snot are we gonna do with all this nacho cheese dry powder nacho cheese. So somebody's like, well, why don't we put some water in it and wrestle? <laughs> and so that's, that's what they did. They're like, how are you supposed to, how are you supposed to get, what are you supposed to do with five gallon bucket of nacho cheese? Anyway, so I was, that was probably a once in a lifetime experience that I don't want to ever really experience again. It's really, really gross looking. <laughs> and the, the idea is that you get in the nacho cheese and you're wrestling and you're supposed to take both socks off. So the other person, so you get in and wrestle with your socks, swimsuit or whatever you're going to wear. And, um, you're supposed to try and take your opponent's socks off and then, right? There's one, one guy got his opponent's socks off and he, every time he got his opponent's socks off, he'd squeegee out the juicy nacho cheese on his face like he was bathing in the blood of his enemies. I was like, oh my gosh, you guys are too funny. Ugh, oh, that was funny. And then there was 
I brought food because I've got all these dietary, can't eat this, can't eat that, right? So I always bring my own food. But there was food everywhere. And there was Mickey safe food. So I didn't, I barely touched my food because anytime I was like, I think I'm hungry. Somebody came by and like, hey, somebody's in the kitchen and they're making omelets. Somebody's in the kitchen and they're making this. So uh, there's pulled pork. And there was always a little bit of something that I could eat. That was a nice experience. Yeah. Setting up was was pretty it was pretty easy, but on Saturday morning when I woke up, my body felt like it had been hit by a train or mauled by a dinosaur. I just have to completely rethink about how I camp because I just can't do those kinds of physical movements right now. I haven't figured out how to re get my body readjusted so that I can do physical activity without aggravating my arthritis or whatever. I, I felt I felt like my legs were going to fall out of my hip sockets. It was really bad. Really uncomfortable. I spent most of Saturday sitting in my chair and, and people watching because I just I didn't have the energy or the oomph to go and explore or do anything else because I was in so much pain. But everybody was really friendly and had really good kind of kind-hearted energy to them that I ran into and I didn't I didn't run into anyone that I was like, ooh, I'd rather not share airspace with you. I'd rather you just go away. And normally, whenever you go to a large group of people, there's always that person or a couple of people you're like, eh, we just don't see eye to eye. I just would prefer you out of my airspace. And I, I didn't run into anyone like that. And when I was sitting, sitting in my tent, people watching, like, people would come up and, and chat with me just, just to be friendly. And there was a lot of very friendly um, interactions. Like if you were out in public, then you wanted to be social. If you weren't out in public and you were hiding in your tent, then you didn't want to be social. Go ahead. <laughs> and it made it really, made it really easy to just talk to anyone, you know, and have a conversation. So I had some good conversations. And I had some good company and that was, it was, it was nice. Also, we got to do a fire show on Saturday night and I was able to play with a little bit of fire which left me in, in more physical pain, but I wasn't about to let it go. So you, I, you do what you can do, right? You still have to live your life no matter what's going on with you health-wise, especially if it's not going away anyway soon, anytime soon. <laughs> anyway, so that was, that was fun to be able to perform with some of the troop members I haven't performed with yet because there's been new, new members. And, and um, it was also neat to perform for a group that hasn't seen much of Ignition perform, my fire troop. So they were all oohs and ahs. They've been around burners. They've seen, they've seen burning people who burn, uh, who dance fire dance. So it's not like they completely don't know, but they just hadn't seen stuff that Ignition does. And we have a couple of, of things that are just pretty darn cool that we do as a group. So well done. Well done event. That was that was nice. They had a whole kitchen set up with like three stoves, like like actual stoves, so you could you could use the kitchen and there was like a place that you could uh, wash your dishes and you're supposed to clean up after yourself, of course. And it just it really felt it really felt um, like a huge group of friends hanging out sharing things, sharing experiences, and and even though they didn't, not everyone knew everyone, it was just an understanding that this is the kind of event it is, and this is the kind of uh, energy and feel to it, and so it was very, it was family friendly, it was comfortable, everybody was friendly, there was lots of kind-hearted people, lots of people who are willing to put in their two cents and work, and I'm sure there's always a dud somewhere, but I didn't happen to run into any duds. So that's my review on the event. That was that was nice. I'm not going to call out names, but it was nice to meet some of you. And if you are my friend on Facebook and you're watching this, hello. Nice to meet you. you I haven't seen you in a long time. And, and I saw you again. Hello. Nice to see you again. And I had some really fun times hanging out and talking with people. So if you were one of the people that hung out and talked with me, this is me saying... Awesome, thank you.
what? I'm trying to think of what else. What else happened that was really cool? They did. They had other things going on too. They had. They had just plain sock wrestling where you tried to take off each other's sock. They had. Um, they built a wood. A wood. Thing. It's like. It's like a well. It's like a mini wood. Looked like a well. It had a little crank bucket. They they burnt burnt that as like an effigy burn after the fire show and there was lots of music and lots of dancing there was fire pits everywhere like big big fire braziers um, it's one of those camp outs that you buy a ticket to I think tickets were like 50 or 60 dollars so it's not just a inclusive it's not just an inclusive group but it's it's also they donate money and time into creating a place that they can they can camp out together after Burning Man. So Okay that's all. Send her over now. Bye.